Q Season 4, Episode 12. Hey, it's Bokuro. Are we gonna focus on Fukuro Dani? When his mood swings, his depression. The whole team just feels it. Now I gotta do Bokuro maintenance non stop. Oh no! Oh no, they're missing the whole experience. They're not. Wait, where are they then? God, this is a lot of work. I mean, admittedly, that does kind of suck. Like, that's part of the whole thing. That's part of what made it so epic when Carsona walked in. The feeling that you've made it to the big stage. You don't want to do all that just to feel like you're you're playing in a storage shed. That just means you gotta win. You gotta win so you get the, the ultimate reward that you crave. Attention. Episode 12, Vivid. So we get the first win. He's got eyes like me. Yeah, he was having a big moment last episode. He didn't show it. Just used it. Oh, Meet your legacy. I can't imagine Daichi as a freshman. It just feels like a perpetual senpai. Like he was just born a senpai. Oh, he's still being like a, a nice, a good underclassman. He's an amazing kid, but not going to the... <laughs> National team. You really feel like Daichi's goodness is real. Just real. Like, it's so apparent how much he, he adores them. I mean, I could talk about Daichi forever, but he's such a good leader in that he has the position, the strength, the capability, and there's no other things mixed in that often get mixed in with leadership, like arrogance, bossiness, being in love with authority for authority's sake, taking undue pride or reward from the position beyond the ability in the position, just the position itself, just a solid leader. Yeah, he picked a fight and he won. Yeah, they all love him. They're all smiling. Yeah, it's like a Kurosawa game. Uh, okay. <laughs> sure. We, we were doing that anyway before you showed up. Odd, odd. I know it's, it's support. It comes, probably comes from a good place, but that felt weird. Like... What have you done? I mean, it sympathizes with all the senpai senpai. There's something really painful, perhaps bittersweet, but painful about them watching Karsuno have this moment because they probably put in a lot of work themselves. And the result of that is somebody else getting to live what was probably their dream. It takes a lot to just be purely supportive in that moment and not be at least a little bit jealous. <laughs> yeah, you would expect. Except maybe the team we just beat. <laughs> I mean, Nakoma's gotta win this. There we go. That's the team we know. There we go. That's exciting. It's so cool to get to watch each other play. This, I mean, it almost feels faded. <laughs> Look at it on his face. <laughs> but there's nothing he would like more than to play them. What? We get a shop? Please be slice of life shopping episode. <laughs> oh, they mean like just. <laughs> Local volleyball shopping, of course. He's gonna dink all over you. <laughs> I mean, you don't get chances like this very often. If you're ever gonna buy a souvenir, you know, buy a souvenir the time you went to the, the big stage. God bless these these teammates that they have any energy left at all to play volleyball with all the Bokuro management. Yeah, he's got a man up for real. Zoned out. Yeah, he needs either some tough love or just for them to be great, make him feel bad for not pulling his weight. Nice. You're not relevant. 
until you. Yeah, snap out of it. Might make him feel worse though. Might spiral. I mean, that's true. If, if it's only one court, literally all eyes on you. The other time that's true will be the finals. Let's think about that. Oh, nice. Oh, they're playing in the gift shop. <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> it doesn't, he doesn't deserve this. It doesn't deserve this inspirational music for this moment. He's just having a little hissy fit. I can't remember exactly the, the times when this music was used, but it's been used for more important moments than this. I'm making fun of Bokuto here, but it's relatable to a certain extent. What's notable is not that he's going through this, but that all the other characters in the show are just so amazing that this feels weird. This normal human emotion feels strange. I've thought a lot about how much energy I've wasted, how much more I could have done or could do if I didn't spend so much time spinning my wheels over things that were not really important at all or had no significance, no had no real actual impact on anything outside of my own ruminations. I mean, it's easier said than done, but I, I really believe that the world is a playground. Assuming things are going decently well, you don't have any major threatening, let's say, or dire issues in life, the things you can do on a day-to-day -day basis or moment-to-moment -moment basis is just unfathomably huge. If only there wasn't that fear or obstacle. One thing I try to remind myself that I find helpful is that if embarrassment is the only risk, then there's no risk. Maybe to make that bigger or to apply it to a Bokuto situation. If the danger or risk is in your own mind, if it's for your own psyche, then there is no danger really, as long as you can recognize it for what it is and, and take steps to address it. If you have the fortitude to handle it yourself. Get him one good hit. And back on track. There he goes. There he goes. Not even a chance. Couldn't even react. You can't look. You can't be sad in front of Hinata. Hinata just shines a light on everyone. Speaking of Hinata. <laughs> Damn. Off the ceiling, almost. They also advance. Yeah, it's, it was really Hinata. It was really Hinata. So much work, so much work, so much strategy for Bokuro's emotional management. Yeah, this also feels like a faded meeting. Oh, are they owls? They're owls. They both got the eyes. So much was just communicated. He's heard of him. But I know. <laughs> it's like a mirror. He lost. He looked away, he lost. Not a won their first matchup. The way he looks down on him. Yeah, we all do. <laughs> it's normal. Busy having stare downs. Future rivals. I, I can tell they, they will get along really well. Eventually. It's too similar. He's obsessed now. Yeah, he can jump. Now just got higher to aim. Yeah, Carson doesn't have the greatest record with media coverage. Uh, I bet somehow knowing them, even if they got interviewed for this event, the news coverage would still find a way to talk about Oikawa. He's like a dog that like sees another dog from across the street. Damn, sure are setting him up well. You can just feel the fire being lit in and on his heart right now. Okay, that's that's ridiculous. <laughs> that angle though. <laughs> this is Hinata vision probably. 
Damn. You know he not watch this. Oh no. They called him Little Giant. Yeah. You know what's kind of cool and interesting about this is that this actually gives him a parallel with the coach who was hating on him, the Shiro Torizawa coach. Hinata won't go the same route because that's not who he is. But it's kind of in the same category, no? Hinata is not one to make excuses, so I'm not saying he's doing this, but just thinking about this kind of situation. In an area of life with clear winners, clear losers, where it's more, perhaps meritocratic or there's skewed results, you can look to those that are more successful and find reasons why that is. You know, you can identify advantages they have that you feel you don't have and that at its best can be a source of strength and energy and, and pride that you're sticking it out and grinding through the difficulty at worst a reason not to try harder but then inevitably even for people who are very sound minded and who are very clear about their their path and their goal it's sensitive when you see someone doing better than you who is at the same strata or who has the same specs that you do it almost demands that you look at what you're not doing or what you haven't done yet <laughs> Yeah, people are gonna focus on that endlessly. Yes, I was about to say. This is the first time she's asking this question, but this is the million times to talk about the same topic. Yeah, it's all they see. He's a spokesman. <laughs> You're not just listening. <laughs> thought he was an owl, maybe he's a seagull. So many mixed emotions. So many mixed emotions for, for Hinata. This is just one of those mismatches that happens in terms of the lives they live and how often they have to deal with these things. For her, it's just an innocent question. For him, it's like his life. You know, people look at him like, oh, you did great despite your height. You did great despite your height. It's kind of like when you get rude replies from customer service or any kind of worker and you're like, man, that person's rude, which perhaps is a fair critique. But then you think this person probably deals with stuff like this and questions like this a hundred times every day. And for him or her, you are one. You know, everyone asking is just kind of a congealed conglomerate of ignorant people. In a sense, it's one identity asking you the same question a thousand times. So it's understandable how people can get frustrated, not that it's a good method of coping. For you, maybe it's your first time with this problem and so you're shocked at the response. It's just a mismatch of experience. It's bizarre thinking about Hinata listening to this because he's a very positive person. My feeling is he'll mostly take this and use it as inspiration. There's got to be a little bit of like, not antagonism, but rivalry, which I think manifests as a slightly negative sentiment or a drive against someone. But then again, he's just the spokesman for a lot of things Hinata deals with himself. Though that could also have a negative side because maybe someone like Hinata would want to be that person. You know, maybe you would want to be the ones that chart that course for others. He's going through changes right now. Okay, good. Yeah, it's a good positive way. <laughs> Testament to his character. That's what you get. That's what I get thinking about Hinata as a normal person. Also starting the trash talking already, huh? I <laughs> guess <laughs> should just get along. Yeah, I think they both love to meet each other. <laughs> Meanwhile, internally sweating. Can't show weakness, can't show weakness. Oh yeah, I feel like it's gonna be exponentially harder as time goes on too. It's no ordinary tournament. 40 teams got. Damn. Tomorrow 20, right? So I really love this episode, even though there was not a lot of volleyball playing. There was no Karasuno playing at all. The owl or seagull guy is a really exciting counterpoint to Hinata without being able to articulate the full extent of what it would mean to come across someone like this, someone who's being called Little Giant. There's this whirlwind of emotions that I feel sympathetically, among other things. This is a weird analogy, but it's coming to mind. Speaking of dogs, imagine Hinata's a greyhound and he's been playing with, you know, mastiffs and Great Danes and stuff. And, you know, he can play with them and compete with them, etc. But he's just met another greyhound and now two greyhounds 
clowns can race. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like now it's just about what they are, who they can be on even grounds of comparison. Who's the better greyhound or who's the better little giant? It gets more exactly to what Hinata is and the challenges he faces in a way that perhaps eliminates some of the noise of the other stuff. Also notable this episode is the fact that a lot of teams we know from the past are making an appearance. And I, I think that's a sign of what's coming. IQ is great about setting up the threats and the characters before the events. This would be a long time coming. We've been with these teams for a long time. We have a lot of history. There's a lot of mutual respect and with that respect comes a little bit of fear, which I think we we're seeing in the last scene with Daichi. We've had huge rivalries in the show so far, but what happens when those rivalries are your friends? Whoops, just realized I, I almost missed an end credit scene. They were still impressed by this normal building. Here we go into our plebeian hotel. Oh my god, I'm so glad I caught this scene. <laughs> right? Oh, he can no longer treat her as a friend though. He's, he's seen and now he can't unseen. It's the best day of Sanaka's life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it does seem that way. It was not really subtle. And that's when I knew Tanaka blew his chance. <laughs> Gotta keep it together, man. Gotta be a little bit aloof. Where's Sokka when you need him? Although, <laughs> it just depends on how much she likes him. If someone really likes you, it doesn't really matter what you do. There's like this point of no return of liking someone. If you've decided or if they're in that category in your heart, negatives become positives. I would love an episode on Tanaka <laughs> and this girl. I would be so happy. Does it make his playing better though or, or worse? Is this a good thing or, or a bad thing? Does it help him stay motivated and try to win hard or does it distract him? Because you know what? Who needs volleyball? <laughs> Who needs volleyball when you have a cute crush? Who's into you? Speaking of emotional management. 